Romanian slander inbound! Eightlidge Resident Evil is a video game. It is the sequel to 2017's critically acclaimed Resident E7 Full Stop Biohazard. The game follows the average Romanian during the morning trek to his local little. Along the way, you encounter numerous beastly creatures and monstrous savages, all afflicted with the curse of being Romanian. In this game, you play as Ethan Winters, as he traverses the nightmares of a Romanian man faced with the possibility of not being able to steal anything for five minutes. During your adventures, you encounter the least intimidating Romanian woman, discover the European delicacy of mutilated hand, and come face to face with the evil resident. It is these misadventures that elevate Village Resident Evil 8 Village to the noble stratum of being hella fucked. I now invite you to join me on our own misadventure as I guide you through the unbridled chaos that has manifested itself as Resident Evil 7 plus 1. Resident Evil 6 plus 2 takes place in the modern day, but you'd never have guessed. From the lichens, to the werewolves, to the fish people, to the puppets, to the vampires. Be a strange metal man. The only thing grounding this game is the realistic weaponry. You may have guessed the game takes place in Romania. What you may not have guessed is their somewhat relaxed gun laws. This quaint little village in the heart of the mountains has more firepower than a Central American police station. I say quaint and little, but this place goes deeper than the maternal issues plaguing its developers. The first major area is the Resident Evil village, where you'll find your werewolves or lichens. You'll also find find some survivors for five minutes before they are each slaughtered mercilessly. The village is framed by rural snowy mountains. This claustrophobic closed off environment really makes you feel you like feel Batman. Like the game has you return to the village to explore it further once you're done with the other areas. The castle needs refurbished, place looks fucking ancient. There's notes from the 50s mate. Someone clean up the blood in the cellar. Who let Ingrid out of her cage? Sophisticated furniture on the streets, blood caked murder basement in the sheets. The enemies you'll find here consist of vampire women, bat woman, zombie woman and chief woman. The castle towers above the rest of the village, implying the superiority that femoids have over your average sheeple. Once you're done in your second village tour, you win an all-expense paid trip to the Valleys of Hell. The house. Just a house along the road. Here you find adversaries such as women, doll, more doll and stroke <laughs> All the game's horror was soaked up and condensed please, into one please, single please. basement. Six playthroughs in and you'll still feel on edge, as if it isn't scripted harder than your average late night Jimmy Fallon episode. Enter the reservoir, where you face off against the missing link and set for a spot of fishing. This area is wet. The factory is the largest leap from anything seen so far in the game. The progression of the story is linked directly with it, because the fantasy wanes as more is revealed, allowing the developers to be more grounded in their depiction of the world. Here you face off against cyborg, zombie men and Magneto. Resident Evil 4 times 2 has a wide variety of areas to explore, but they all share one common feature. You being the brain in a world full of pinkies. And such, the game is classed as a survival horror, but when you're strapped with more lead than a water filtration system, you become the horror. Being a survival horror game, the main gameplay elements involve you surviving the horror. I can get past the horror, but I need to improve the surviving. Fortunately, the game hears my prayers and has blessed me with an angel known only as the Duke. This cheeky chap provides us with all sorts of enhancements in exchange for Romanian lay. Duke, I apologize. I'm about 17,000 pounds short of this weapon upgrade. I'll pay you an exposure. The horror asks aspects of this survival horror are greatly neutered, but there is one element in its favour. Unlike other Resident Evils, in this game you play as the first person, accentuating the atmosphere and really making you feel like But unlike other Resident Evils, it stays true to the formula sometimes. The castle, village and factory all embody the backtracking nature of the game, while the house provides the horror and the reservoir is still wet. Throughout the game you will also encounter other Resident Evil classics, like puzzles. These puzzles can range from something simple, like having to collect two stone tablets on your travels, or playing pinball with an enormous enormous diorama for the prize of a dead woman's skull. But it does bring something new to the table. Following on from Bioha 7 full stop art colon Resident Evil's Madhouse difficulty, Resident Evil 9 Takeaway 2 plus 1 introduces its own stupid mode, Village of Shadows. Village of Shadows turns the game on its head and as you take the role of the lone spaceship from Space Invaders. Gee, I bet this mode would be difficult without the infinite rocket gun. To unlock some of the game's more abstract weaponry, you will need to complete certain challenges to unlock completion points, otherwise known as CP, otherwise known as COD points, otherwise known as Club Penguin otherwise known as use these completion points at the in-game shop to unlock your very own Darth Maul lightsaber. Or if you want, you can unlock a picture. Previous games have you unlock different game modes, new weapons, or just you can play as Tofu, I suppose. This game allows you to restart your save file following completion, akin to New Game Plus, except the difficulty doesn't change at all, allowing you to witness the wide grin melt off of the lichen's faces during the intro when this injured outsider reaches into his briefcase that he canonically carries around with him through the whole game and pulls out two knives, four pistols, three shotguns, one sniper, two ARs, a grenade launcher, three magnums, the rocket gun and the lightsaber. Even with more guns than flooded roads in the Netherlands, there are some bastards that stand in your way. Enter Sturm. Fuck this guy. The first three encounters are chase scenes, but in the third he runs at you in a 
narrow corridor, smashing everything in his path to open up the boss arena. You have to wait for him to charge at you and run out the way like the Bane boss in Arkham Asylum, then shoot his back straight forward? Well, it would be if the arena wasn't on fire and he didn't turn unreasonably fast for a guy with a propeller attached to his face. Nowadays, a game cannot just be a game. There must be a driving force behind your actions. Gone are the days of click screen and win. Resident Evil 64 divided by 8's driving force is its story, which actually tells a fairly meaningful tale that I'm unironically quite fond of. Unfortunately, we cannot adequately delve into the story as we can't go a solid five seconds without something funny happening. To quell the savage TikTok monkey people with their picosecond attention span, 100 years ago, a woman named Miranda committed the worst sin known to man and procreated. God punished her for her insolence and struck the child down with the divine power of the Spanish flu. If it's the Spanish flu, why is it in Romania, dumbass? Miranda's things then wandered into a cave to, as she put it, die. That's when she found a strange black mould. Touching it, she was gifted with incredible abilities. It was just in a cave somewhere in Romania. When she realised what she had become, she used her immense power to travel to Earth 616 and face off against Spider-Man. Unfortunately, he wasn't home, so she came back and hatched a new plan. Miranda believed her dead child's consciousness was stored in the Venom symbiote for some reason, as if every dead Romanian is stored there like the afterlife. Miranda experimented on villagers, searching for a worthy vessel for her reincarnated child. Remember... <laughs> Remember when it was zombies? Mold, parasites, and immorality. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. But Mother Miranda accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Nothing, there is no fourth ingredient. Thus, the four lords were born. Using their ultra superpowers, Magneto, Jeff Dunham, The Missing Link, and Dark Souls 3, Yarn the Giant boss fight, 4K 60 FPS, have dedicated their lives to doing whatever they want, I guess. Miranda was approached by an organisation asking for a sample of the mold in exchange for information on a newborn baby that could act as a vessel for her dead child. The company experimented on the moles and created their own adolescent girl from it, leading on to the story of VIII Ludge Resident Evil minus VIII times 2 Ludge plus VII plus Biohazard. After the events of that game, Ethan Winters and his wife Mia committed the worst sin possible and procreated. This is when Chris Redfield enters the story and commits exoricide on Ethan's behalf so that he is left no choice but to breed with Chris's sister and continue the Redfield lineage. After a lengthy stroll in the beautiful Romanian wilderness, Ethan enters the village and is kidnapped by the Four Lords. Can you imagine waking up in a place like this? You'd think you've gone fucking bonkers. After a quick game of Balkan Ninja Warrior, Ethan enters the castle, where he encounters its inhabitant, Root. After escaping, he makes his way through the building and runs into three seductive flywomen. Unfortunately for them, Ethan is a Sigma male and fights the urge to tap that. He faces off against the big booby vampire woman again, where she uses her talons to divorce him from his right appendage. Don't worry, just throw some apple juice on it, good as new. Ethan escapes the castle, having injured his hand a total of six times and fights a mutated booby vampire woman and less booby and more demented Zapdos. He kills her, takes a look at his prize, and picks up a strange orange flask. Duke informs him it is his daughter's head in a jar. Continuing on his mission to save his daughter, he fights gender-bent Jeff Dunham, who uses the power of mindfuckery against him. But bad news for Jeff Dunham, Ethan has no personality and is therefore completely immune to her powers. Ethan goes to the reservoir, encounters a well-groomed villager, and faces off against his most dangerous adversary yet, Fishman. <laughs> After collecting all four chunks of his still-living daughter, he enters Walter White's factory. Because his name is Heisenberg. Guys, it's funny. Here, Walter White has been crafting an army of roboticized Jesse Pinkmans, equipped with glowing red wheat points. You trudge onto the top, fight this cunt, and are immediately thrown to the very bottom. Ethan's dialogue perfectly sums up our emotion. Chris Redfield has been down here the whole time, assembling Wally to take the fight to Brian Cranston. He explains that he never killed Mia. It was Miranda using the power of the Tom Hardy man and shape-shifting into his wife. Should have figured that out sooner. The appropriate reaction to being shot is not mild confusion. After a lengthy battle of robot wars, Ethan comes out victorious, before Miranda appears and quite literally rips his heart out of his chest. Ah oh man, just use the apple juice again. The story resumes as Chris Redfield and his squad are ready to make their assault on Miranda's army. After having spent the majority of the game in fear, you finally get to live out your fantasy of slaughtering- You thought I was gonna say Romanians! You are fucked me! I'm done with you! Chris tackles a below average height Dutch man, but after he tanks five shots from the wrath of God, he gives up and fucks off. After the exposition room, Chris finds Mia locked away and exclaims, I purposefully kept your husband in the dark about our plan and now he is pushing up Daisy's lol. Ethan, after having his heart ripped out and being killed instantly, activates his Chad energy reserves and gets the Fuck up! It turns out that in Resident E7 Full Saw Biohazard, Jack Baker sucker punched Ethan so hard that it rendered him a goner, and the mold infiltrated his body, much akin to your favourite adult animated Japanese movie. Duke is carrying Ethan in his carriage, like a real G, and drops him off so he can confront the one true Resident.
Resident Evil Village. He still doesn't have a heart, by the way. Ethan comes out victorious, but the damage sustained to his body after being bashed, bruised, cut, fucked, stabbed, bitten, and literally everything in between is too much. He volunteers to stay behind and kill Venom once and for all, allowing his wife and daughter to escape to safety. What a fucking chad. Every game has you survive a ridiculous amount of physical trauma, but your mind ignores it because it never makes any sense. This game canonizes it and cements Ethan as fucking unstoppable. But Lewis, I hear you say, before we end the video, I have a question. Yes, my queenian companion, what if I want my plot-driven action horror game to be reduced to a 90s era shoot em up with the only objective being kill? Well, my good chum, you're in luck, as Capcom have heard your pleas and introduced the mercenaries mode to help you fulfil your fucked up fantasy. The mercenaries mode was introduced in Resident Evil 3 and has been a mainstay in some of the games ever since. We haven't seen it since 2012. But now it's back in Resident Evil 2 times 3 plus 2. In this mode, you are put on a clock and must kill as many enemies as you can in the time allocated. The longer you keep your combo going, the more points will be bestowed on you. After several stages, the level will end and you will be awarded your score, either a C rank, B rank, or an A rank, or an S rank, or an SS rank, or SSS rank. Enemies you face are those found in the main game, sometimes even bosses can make an appearance. Between stages, you can upgrade and swap your weaponry, but nothing from the main game will carry over to this mode. You know who is here though? Fucking Sturm. Once you complete e if you complete every stage with an SS rank, that's when you unlock the lightsaber, in the main game only. Can't use it in the mode you unlocked it, as if we'll be going for high scores at that point, eh? You know how bored you'll be by then, this is the bloody problem. Play it so much to unlock cool gun, then don't even want to use it. Ergo, Resident Evil root 3 brackets 5 n brackets times a cubes plus root 25 n root brackets 2 squared plus 6 n brackets minus 11 n root all over brackets 5 a plus 1 n brackets times 1 over 4 when a equals root 16 n root times 0 0.4375 times bracket bracket 2 times 9 n bracket minus 4 squared n bracket times root 4 is a video game if I remember correctly. A video about the average family man making ends meet and doing what he must during the cost of living crisis with questionable design decisions and a unique take on the term dismemberment. The game has been satisfactorily successful according to reviewers, similar to every other game that has ever been released. Whilst it may have been critiqued for its few plot holes, the general consensus is that it serves as a worthy entry into the franchise, and not just because of the woman. 888888 is a game worth being grateful for, even if you don't like it, because then it gives you something to hate. But I hope I have proven to you that the game consists of more than just shooty, spooky and booty. Before we close off, I will be thanking you generous motherfuckers for sitting through this video, as well as Capcom for developing the game and series known as Resident Colon Evil the punctuation mark, not the organ, and finally, whichever mentally damaged individual that looked at our heartfelt family tale of sacrifice and thought, yup, needs more dommy mommy. I'm hyped up beyond belief, it's like I've just done drugs or something, this is insane. <laughs> the first major area is the Resident Evil Village, where you'll find your... God punished her for in... God punished her her... What the... It's more dommy mommy. <laughs> I'm gonna go down like anything I can drink. 